I'm Kirk Jowers and welcome to the March 31st Frequently Asked Questions episode. As always, I'm joined by Dr. Russell Osgathorpe, the Chief Medical Officer of doTERRA and a board-certified pediatric infectious diseases specialist. Hi, Kirk. Hello. Thank you for continuing to answer these questions. My pleasure. Uh, so these are your questions and we really appreciate you taking the time to, to ask so many great questions. First one, we've got to do it. You've talked about it a little bit throughout, but um, there's still a lot of these questions, so I'm just going to say it right out. What is the deal with masks? Okay. <laughs> on the one hand, officials are saying don't wear a mask, but on the other hand, the same officials are saying we really need masks for our healthcare providers. Doesn't that seem to mean that masks work? Yes, masks do work to limit the transmission of the virus and causing people who are exposed to the virus to get infected. But I want to be clear here. It's about relative risk of whatever activity we're talking about. When you are going to the grocery store, the risk of contracting the virus are, is extremely low. If you stay six feet from others, and you practice good social distancing and hand washing, the risk of contracting the virus, of getting infected, is extremely low. Now, if, however, you are the caregiver for your spouse who is at home, tested positive for COVID-19, not sick enough to be in a hospital, but you are the primary caregiver for them in their isolation phase for 14 days, it becomes very important that when you walk into the room, they are wearing a mask, and when you are caring for them, if possible, you wear a mask as well. Okay. Because that situation, you know you are being exposed to the virus. And so personal protective equipment becomes incredibly important at decreasing the likelihood that the virus will be transmitted to you from your loved one, or from a patient to a caregiver in a hospital, for example. So what we're saying is don't save PPE for just the healthcare providers. We're saying save PPE for when it is most needed. And in yesterday's episode, we talked about the, the survey in over 200 large and small cities said that they are woefully uh, under, <laughs> underprepared with, with PPEs. Right. Are there any risks with people just wearing masks? If we had unlimited amounts of masks, is there any risk of just um, wearing your masks? It's a good question. Masks and the wearing of personal protective equipment uh, is a skill. And if you use them correctly, uh, you can mitigate risk, you can decrease your risk. But if you use them inappropriately, you can actually give yourself a false sense of security by wearing that mask and then do things that you think the mask will protect you from, but it won't. Wearing a mask will decrease the risk, but when I do that in a hospital, when I'm caring for patients... Yeah, go through in, your routine on, on sure. that. You walk in, you see a patient. I'm, I'm completely gowned and gloved, and before I gown, glove, and mask, I have used hand sanitizer on my hands, I then gown, glove, and mask. I care for the patient, talk to the patient, answer all the questions that I can, do whatever it was that I needed to do. And then I have to go through what we call a doffing procedure, which is how we take off our PPE. And you take it off in a specific fashion. One of the ways that people really mess up doffing their PPE or taking off their personal protective equipment is taking off of their mask. To take off your mask, you have to take off your gloves, your gown, and then you have to hand sanitize your hands, reach up behind, take off the mask, throw the mask away, then hand sanitize again. Or else what you've done is you've contaminated your hands just by taking off that mask. And if you were to go and eat your lunch without hand sanitizing after and before, you could potentially self-contaminate with whatever virus you were trying to avoid. So for every patient, we have to go through um, this procedure. They right. are not multi-use pieces of equipment for us in a hospital um, because we go from infected patients to uh, non-infected patients and so we have to be very careful about how we take on and off our PPE and use it very appropriately. So I guess what we're asking is it's not that we say that PPE only works for people in a healthcare environment. That's not true. 
PPE works for everyone when we use it appropriately and correctly. And during this time where PPE is a limited resource, we would say that we want as much of it as possible with our healthcare providers because they have to use so much of it and so much of what they do is high risk. Right. They're on, literally folks, they are on the front lines. My colleagues right now caring for patients are having to figure out how they come home at night to their families and whether they get to hold their children or not. This is a very complex calculus. We need PPE to be available, so don't waste it. That's the message I want to give today. Don't waste the PPE on using it on things that don't decrease risk. So let me be clear. So when we use PPE to walk down the street, to go on a walk, our risk of getting COVID-19 during that activity was almost zero, right? So it's very hard to get much bang for your buck there. But if you're caring for a patient with COVID-19, that risk is so high that if you wear your personal protective equipment appropriately, you can decrease the risk that you'll spread that virus to yourself or to your loved ones. And there's so much bang for your buck there. That's where we want to use PPE. We don't want to use it for things where there isn't much benefit. This question came up several times. You've addressed it in the past to some extent, but let's be very clear on it. Uh, the question is, is it possible for the virus to contaminate clothing, hair, and skin, um, you know, even your dog. Uh, does this mean we can transfer COVID-19 from these things? COVID-19 has been found on many different surfaces. The research suggests that you can move COVID-19 and recover the nucleic acid off of many different surfaces up to many hours after it was deposited there. So the short answer to your question is yes. You can move COVID-19 to inanimate objects, pick up COVID-19, and theoretically get infected from those. Right. And kind of back to the PPE, if, if you're wearing gloves, it could marginally protect you uh, if you use it correctly. But if you theoretically touch a, an item that has the COVID-19 and then touch your face with your glove, it, yeah, you didn't do yourself any benefit. It doesn't so. help at all, right? Right. Um, the other thing to remember is, is that hand washing, the reason why we talk about hand washing is not just because we're trying to be everybody's mom. Right. The reason yeah. we're talking about hand washing is, is we know that our surfaces can be contaminated with COVID-19 and if we frequently wash our hands appropriately, we can remove COVID-19 from our hands and decrease the likelihood that we get infected. So frequent appropriate hand washing works. Sounds good to me. Thank you so much for those answers and thank you for watching and for your questions and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.